look at this one. This is Bellular. And this is his first impressions video of the War Within Alpha. Oh, today is a pretty exciting one because the War Within. I've been playing the Alpha for a few days. Matt has been playing the Alpha for a few days. We put all of our thoughts together. So today it is time to talk about impressions of the War Within so far, based on some actual I've not heard anything tomorrow, bad so far. We've got a big video coming on a bunch of just pretty damn cool features, lesser known things, and I've got an interview with Holly dropping on Friday. All pretty cool, but let's just get straight into things with the opening. So, the Alpha plops you straight into Kaz Algar, which is, well, into the Isle of Dorn, which basically is the first zone. It's, uh, it's the above ocean, like, overall island, with the other zones being underneath it. And it's clearly after so stuff has went the down. Overland. It really seems that Zalatath has just handed our asses to us big time. A notable character may in fact be dead. I'm kind of holding out <laughs> hope that it's a fake out. Um, but I actually think even if that character is dead, I think that actually could work for the narrative quite well. Of course, given cinematics, cutscenes, all of that flair, I think that this stuff could be pretty great. Now, at the very least, right, it does not look like a sleepy open. It seems that the expansion is getting properly right into it. So uh, straight the into the course, action. So that's kind of cool to see. Fair, right? That's fine to me. But what I wanted to see was an improvement in the fantasy, the tone, the feeling, right? Exactly. What are Troy. they actually achieving via those quests? So Chris just says, can I join your guild? Feel like if you, all you got to do is reach out on Discord. Technically a really we can get you a but it felt invite into the guild server and you can fill out an application. Right? Like if it was meant to be salt and pepper, they accidentally swapped the salt for sugar and it didn't taste quite right. So, with a weird food analogy done, how does it feel? Well, obvious caveat first, getting a full handle on questing is hard here. Like, we know a few beats from the first zone, essentially. There's no music, the vast majority of BO is not there. I will say, what I said, I liked. I'm not going to talk about spoilers, but I do get start of Legion vibes. Image shit okay. goes down. You're immediately beset by Nerubians, and the Nerubians Dude, that's are awesome, like an action-packed intro. Story, right? So, we secure our position, right? You meet plenty of heroes, you'll know. Uh, you meet the Earthen, and very soon, you're continually getting messed with, right? People die. The, the threatening force actually succeeds in their goal a fair few times. Well, and if you listen to what Ian was saying during yesterday's presentation of everything you need to know about the War Within, he talked about how the, these are these these bad guys, the Nerubians, are, are, if you remember, they showed up briefly, and I think it was Lich King, um, but he was saying how they used to be one of the world's superpowers. Like they were up there with high elves and, and so on and so forth. It's just that they suffered, you know, this, they got overrun during a war and they've sort of fell off the map. But they haven't ever gone away. They've just been reduced and over here doing other things. And now they're coming back with the force. And so it's like, if you could imagine high elves having had a peak and then they had a fall, but then they're coming back up to a peak again. That's essentially what we're he seeing here. So uh, them being a threat, it's not meant to be just another threat. This is like, oh, this is another major race that could impact, you know, the entirety of the world as we know it. It sounds great on paper, but, you know, we got to see how it plays out in game. So the combination of Zalatath and the Nerubians so far is immediately working really well. And the opening impression for me is that of a sharp-ish departure from Dragonflight. Um, or at the very least, that they want to be more clear with threat. Now, to touch Dragon on results, we haven't played them, but the Arathi are in an overt, like, life-and-death struggle over the Nerubians. It also seems the Arathi being there is kind of a surprise to everybody. Um, they've also got some internal divisions. And looking at them, they do feel very core Warcraft, right? That's one of the things I really, going into this, wanted to know, would it feel like Core Warcraft? Thus far, it's definitely more on track, so that's good. Now, that's not to say that it's one note. There are plenty of nice character moments. I think some side quests that are covering, like, good thematic ground. There may be a little bit too quick for my liking, but basically pretty good stuff. It's okay. too early to tell for the overall thing. But really what matters to me is follow-up. I mean, as an example, when I tested Dragonflight, we went straight into a massive fight between the Karen Tor and the Primalists, only for that to just kind of fizzle out. Yeah, it just went away. For the expansion to feel like <laughs> it was lacking that solid through line as expressed by the boots and the ground narrative. Now look, they could obviously cock it up, and somehow the later zones could be terrible. 
I don't really get that vibe so far, though, and if the Nerubians at the start are anything to go by, then certainly by the time we get to Ashgahet, I, I think some pretty real shit will be going down. Really, my core worry was, like, would this feel like Warcraft? Would this be more of the sort of overly saccharine, pulling its punches, dragonflight stuff? Uh, thus far, no, which I'm really, really happy about. And, uh, Sounds so awesome. A little bit of real talk. I've got a really nice microphone coming, so our videos sound better, and... It was paid for by today's sponsor. Hoot.dev, who you work go. with because their founders are fellow viewers of the channel. So here's the deal. They will be teaching you programming. They're a programming RPG that makes learning backend development fun. Uh, they've got quests, levels, achievements, That's a global cool. leaderboard to keep it spicy. They've even got a new implementation of raid bosses. But code Bellular at boot.dev forward slash Bellular gets you 25% off your first payment. And uh, of course, uh, there's there's beans to be made. It's backend development. Uh, US backend devs earn over 100 grand a year median salary per stack overflow. And uh, being a programmer, you generally have pretty damn terrific options with working from home and that kind of thing. Now, Boot is specializing in backend development using Python and Go at your own pace. Their mission is basically to avoid tutorial hell and to get you just coding. And that's what their platform is entirely geared toward. And just going through the various topics, I mean, you can see for yourself, I mean, if you want to program, um, go for it. A boatload of content. They're I've never had the desire to do programming. And then, credit to them, they go properly in depth. And I've focused on creative endeavors for years and years and years and years, and years now. I have had to learn a lot of hands-on stuff like video editing, and instead PHP development, some basic HTML back in the day to get websites up and running. That is all Lots of tools over the years, the different engines for game development, backend development, Photoshop, and their Discord is great. Canva. You got to learn shit if you want to be self-employed. Honestly, it slays how I learn programming. And again, you can get started today with 25% off your first purchase following my link using code Bellular at boot.dev forward slash Bellular. And of course, 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee and so on. All right, cheers, Boot are an awesome partner to work with. So nice. let's talk then about the Isle of Dorne. One thing you'll notice as you look through the gameplay footage is it does look pretty sparse. Now, they did tell us that it would look It's like alpha. That. It's basically missing clutter, creatures, and a lot of those. So, yeah, it did feel sparse. I'll say that the art direction so far, I have quite liked. There is a cleanliness to the line work on the new earthen kit. Certainly, Yeah, there the, are the new earthen structures look earthen freaking that, amazing, like, They just man. remind me a little bit of some Warhammer dwarf things. Um, I just think like their their industry is all very cool. I'm seeing some of the vehicles, look at that like the mech like stuff that they can use. Dwarven cool. mechs, baby. At the basics like the bridges, the gates, their buildings. Ooh, that's cool. I mean, one of the taverns basically looks exactly like the one um, in the like in the Dunmoreau starting zone. But of course, lovely modern. It's and dwarven. So yeah, it's earth and dwarven. Nice. Now. Listening to what devs were saying, it seems that everyone was chomping at the bit to get us to Hallowfall and Ashkehet. Dude. Uh, the latter especially. And I, really I gotta say, actually, if you listen to the everything you need to know about World of Warcraft thing that they did with Ian and the art director yesterday, <laughs> they kept talking about that zone. Like, there's definitely stuff they're really proud of there. So it's And, and that's definitely more towards the end of things. They're definitely hyping people up for this destination. Really nice thing is they talked about Ashkehet literally as being akin to Suramar. So that's to say that, well, these Nerubians, they're not just creepy, horrible, gnarly spiders. They are actually a very old race. Yeah, this is what I was talking about it earlier. Long time. And this is essentially them, like, yes, isolated, but also at quite a height of, uh, of their power. Now, some of the footage that we were able to see, I don't think that we're able to share in this video, though. And um, you can definitely see that and what they were showing off of Ashkehet. So as a zone, that is certainly getting quite, uh, quite interesting to me. Looks pretty good. The next thing to talk about then is Delves. Okay, so to catch you up, Delves basically are a bit of a single-player dungeon, but they're done, like, seamlessly through the world. And they yeah, they showed, like, will be hard enough to you go into the zone, and it's like there's a line right there, and you just, world all of a sudden, you're in your own instance. Of the Great Vault. So, fairly interesting system. We've only got a small look at them, but there's definitely a lot to say. It so reminds me of the skirmishes like and in instances. In Hang on, let me, let me pause this here. This reminds me of the skirmishes in Lord of the Rings Online, right? When you can you can pick the instance window, you get the drop down, you can choose. I want to, you know, I want tier one difficulty, tier four difficulty. I want to do it with two people, three people, six people, one people, one person. Sorry, one peoples. Um, you could do all of that in that skirmish slash instance window for Lord of the Rings Online. This reminds me a lot of that. 
looks pretty looks really cool so far and this is just the first iteration mist door and you enter it there's no loading screen or anything definitely to me it reminds me of like walking through a mist door in dark souls no loading screen it feels slick it definitely just quite quite modern so i think that is fundamentally pretty damn cool now we've seen a small number of delves like two and only at tier one and two and on both tier one and two they honestly are complete brain off cakewalks that's but awesome that's because tier one and two are intended for leveling now tier two does boost enemy health and damage by 25 percent if that was just 25 percent per tier and i uh, since was able to find out that there are at least currently 10 tiers of these then it would be maxing out at a 225 percent uh, multiplier on the power of enemies well that's awesome but also rewards yeah. so that should be plenty of challenge but at the end of the day for me it's not just about numerical as you go up the tiers they add in more layers of like puzzles and traps so far i only saw a simple thing which was like nerubian webs and uh, you slow if you stand in them and they spawn spiders but it does seem that there are essentially layers of trap like mechanics and uh, what if they do more mechanics for do, higher level difficulties too like they do with mythicals and heroics at a higher tier but again this is something that's going to need extensive end game testing now going into these you get bran bran comes in dps and healing configurations he's got vo that he you know he spouts out when you're there he'll call out so it's yeah it's like the followers and in sometimes uh, loot he's stories of the public you, and he has an xp bar so you will be able to level him up make him more powerful Another thing is treasures, right? So you will find treasures as you go through. And those treasures are a little bit like Torghast powers, which I very much like. I think that ideally, ideally, if a tier 10 delve can be properly challenging, but with there being enough room that just like in any good roguelike game, you can get just that little bit of good luck to uh, just make you feel OP, then I think that would be quite a nice oh. balance to strike. Now, you might be thinking, on, why are you window. describing what a delve is? Why are you talking around it? Why are you not saying, like, does it blow or not? And basically, that's because I enjoy these well enough for a quick jaunt in leveling, but at leveling difficulty, you just don't get that much of a sense of the overall gameplay, right? So if you like doing open world map metas and that sort of thing, you'll probably be fine with these basic leveling ones. But for me, the higher tiers will be make or break, and that is where they have a serious challenge, and it's a challenge we've ran into before with Torghast. And it is essentially this, unavoidable damage. Unavoidable damage can be a big problem in games. It makes the high-end expression of your skill more about crowd control uh, and sort of like that tanking gameplay, kiting and that sort of thing, rather more than like a lot of the positional gameplay and, uh, and interrupting, right? There's a lot of very hard games that you can complete taking zero damage like um i don't know if you're playing in like dante must die and devil may cry um but funnily enough part of this is why i liked thunderstorm's combat model because so much of it is skill shots that your own ability to move to predict things it does actually matter um, so there's always going to be some skill based ends up component to it gg the unavoidable damage is massively scaled up and you'll just have to survive that and everything is uh, a big health sponge then I could see that being a drag, especially if you're playing solo. But if the scaling is instead focusing on the lethality of enemy skill shots and that sort of thing, then I think we could be cooking. But versus Torghast, there is one really good thing, and that is no timer. Because uh, like with Mythic uh, yeah, the, the, Torghast, the the, the ran into a bit of a problem. Getting rid of the timer on is, hand, you know, amazing. damage punishes large pulls. But the timer, well, that incentivizes large pulls. I, I hate the timer. striking the balance there to get the optimal I hate result. timers. Some people, that's hate, really hate, fun hate, gameplay. Hate, hate. To a lot of others, though, it's just stressful and annoying. It's if very stressful and annoying. Right, I think they <laughs> could avoid that problem. So overall, where I'm left... That's one of the reasons I've ignored Mythic all the way up to the point is, where I'm finally going to start running excited. Mythic Zero I'm Dungeons excited, though. with the Season it's 4 content that's coming. That the development team because they've got rid of the timers. They're also cautiously optimistic in this one. They've continually said that they really want feedback for this, right? Especially on the topic of difficulty. So, look, as, as somebody who definitely identifies with playing lots of video games, I usually try to play them in, like, the harder difficulty. The leveling delves, like, they can initially underwhelm. If Endgame doesn't do that, then I think we could be cooking. But again, 
the, the dose makes the it remains yeah the there's there. still months but of testing ahead to find that so fine tuning i would love to hop on an alt and if i had something like say horrific visions that i could gear a character up on then that would be really nice so if these the decent amount of difficulty if that's something that i can just reliably do on an alt I do think that this will be a successful that's that's system i mean a thing that i've loved about plunderstorm is i can remember like I, I, i'm going I for wins means, and kills and plunderstorm so it is pretty cognitively engaging but it's fast it's simple and i can get straight in quickly if delves can essentially work for that play pattern where i can just kind of immediately go do one have a good you know have a good time maybe knock out one in my lunch break that would be really really nice it's awesome that's hard enough that i can properly learn how to play like we were just talking about that i think last class, night try out hero talents against content that like that it was i think it was last night because i went and did lfr for uh the fate of Mir of, of murder still um i went in and the total time of like the video was like 21 minutes and something but a lot of that time was just you know there was some talking some talking and pull pull dead dead and we did tendril and fear so we did both of those boss mobs if you remove the talking it was under 20 minutes with the talking it was like 21 and a half or something like that and i was talking about how i love bite-sized chunks of content where you can go in and accomplish something epic but have it still be something that could be done in 30 minutes or less it doesn't have to be something that's you know like it doesn't have to be a random daily that takes five minutes you can provide a good chunk of content like what he's talking the delves are basically providing players with and that is a 30 minute a 15 to 30 minute chunk of content depending on do you want to run it on tier one or tier 10 like it's up to you where you fall on that scale but the thing that i was really excited about when they were talking about the the everything you need to know video the other day they talked about how delves as well as dungeons as well as raids you have multiple options to work towards tier sets but you know obviously it's going to be a grind no matter what option you take but you'll have multiple ways to get there including via the delves which i think is a really cool option that actually matters then we could be good but again testing Warbands then. Okay, warbands will grow. Yeah, we just covered warbands, warbands before are this. Warbands basically only a foundation. Right now, they're very clearly <laughs> just about things being account wide, right? It's just very much trying to make things like easier, smoother from a player experience perspective. Just little touches like, you know, looting warbound gear that you know you can just send to an alt. That feels great. Filtering out quests that you've already done on your warband. That's a fantastic quality of life feature. I mean, how many times do you log into Valdraken on an alt and it's just quests everywhere and it's kind of annoying. So that's, that's really a legit good. thing, I'm Chris. I'm like... more excited about the future though with how the developers have... Hang on, let me pause for a minute. Chris said, my wife and I have done a couple of companion dungeons and we had so much fun. We used to pass up the dungeon because of having to do pickup groups. Um, so my brother and I are playing with my nephew on Thursday nights. Um, and he's like, he'll be nine soon. And he's, you know, he gets it. He's been playing games since he was like, you know, four years old um, or earlier. I remember they started with like the Lego games on like the Xbox or my brother's old Xboxes. Um but I would never want to subject him to um, the looking for dungeon groups because of how fast everyone wants to go. And that's, that to me is not toxic. That's just the nature. If I want to do something fast, here's a good example. We've been doing normal raids with our guild on Saturday nights since December. And those are meant to be taken at a slow pace, right? We're taking our time. We're spending a couple of hours, you know. Sometimes a couple of hours on one mob. Sometimes it's two different sessions on a single mob, like as we learn the boss fights and everything else. Um, doing looking for raid the other day was like, this is the bite size version of that. Just take a bite and go do it. You don't have to worry about talking. You don't have to worry about any of that if you don't want to, but it's meant to be done quickly. So it's meant to be done at a fast pace. The option of follower dungeons means now that you have you have way more options now. It's like, what do you want to do tonight? Do you want to do something with your spouse, your stick of nether, your nephew, and do it with just the three of you and some NPCs? Great. Or do you only have 15 minutes, you want to get your daily done, so you go into the looking for dungeon, looking for raid, you do a quick pickup group that takes 15 minutes to do, you don't have to talk to anybody, you're just doing a quick blitz of the zone, and then you're gone. Or are you going to go do, on a Thursday night, you're going to get together with four of your guildies, and you're going to do Mythic 10. 
you know, or you're going to raid on Friday nights. Like there are so many levels of accessibility now to World of Warcraft and they're adding more with the follower dungeons that are already in and the delves that are coming up. So not only are we already going to have all the follower dungeons from Dragonflight and all the LFR and everything else, but also moving into War Within, you're not only going to have all of that for the new dungeons and raids, but also delves, which are independent of that system and provide another, I think, what did they say? Was it 12 or 15? I would, I would have to go back to BlizzCon and like, or to like Wowhead or somewhere and like look up how many delves there's supposed to be. But I feel like it's 12 or 15 because I think there's like four zones and it's something like three delves, two or three delves for each zone, something like that. I would need to go confirm that. I've been talking about it. I mean, they're essentially in It's great to be able to do things at your own pace. It will be a lot more than just a quality of life feature eventually and that it is a foundation of how they are building a mostly account-wide progress World of Warcraft going forward. The yeah, next thing to talk the about then is Hero Talents. And shockingly, within a few days, I've not tested literally everything. Um, look, what is good, though, is how testable they are. And this is where they've done a cool thing with the Alpha. So normally, you get a talent point every level. This time around, though, they actually give you the option to be leveled to 71 and then given all of your Hero Talent points, with them then scaling down your damage to compensate for the extra power. Now, what this essentially does, though, is it lets you begin pseudo-maxed out hero talent testing immediately. Now, if the Just so you can test all the abilities. Six weeks, with us only getting, like, level 80 pre-made characters in the beta, right? Well, being able to essentially fully test hero talents now, that gives them, like, six more weeks of impactful hero talent yes. testing. Yes, and data. Which I think is Just raw smart data. Move. And it does bring me on to testing in general, so the way they're doing it is one zone per week, right? With all classes and hero talents, I believe. Basically, that just gives them more focused data, and once they're done with all of those zones, then true to, I suppose, the proper definition of a beta, it will be an end-to-end -end experience, including max level. Another thing that is... Actually kind of exciting is PvP. They confirmed that solo queue RBGs are the new standard format, which is great. And with that being the new standard format, they're, uh, they're adding a new battleground, right? What's good is they very much said that this is only the beginning. And essentially, it seems to me that they see battleground content, including sort of rated battleground content, as just being more broad appeal than that's Arenas what we were just are. talking I mean, about like more access it's, it's more content for more players equals so more players that, playing your that game that is definitely good it's to me. great i think battlegrounds are really fun and the way that you are also able to focus on an objective and that like broader scale position <laughs> akasar says i came back that to my desktop was so confused like <laughs> where the hell is bellular coming well, from there's more to it <laughs> as i'm watching bellular's video far more broad system and if i can gear up a character doing that sort of thing, when, by the way, I'm just getting Conquest gear and buying whatever I want in a vendor, that actually seems like a good experience. So, to kind of wrap up vibes, Dragonflight kind of left me just shouting, where is the sauce? I, I don't really know what the sauce is. I had is, a lot of but, fun you know, with Dragonflight. For a better word, right? Like, the sauce, the, the Warcraft, the zestiness. I mean, at the top of the video, I said it was like it was supposed to be seasoned with salt and pepper, but instead of salt, they, they accidentally used sugar, right? Um, that is where I think Dragonflight was, like, technically good, but it just didn't work out. Like, it, didn't, it just didn't <laughs> feel like what I really want to feel from Warcraft. Um, what I'd say is... I'm Those airships look so that. cool. Um, I mean, the, the glimpses that I've had into Hallowfall and Ash... Hallowfall Pet, is the zone those, that they keep like, pushing, man, those so look terrific. it's going to be What they've shown up, some of the dungeons, that stuff looks terrific as well. And I'm just in a way where those airships, it feels man. peak Warcraft, where if you told, say, younger you who was playing Wrath of the Lich King what was going on, you showed them Hallowfall, you showed them these Arathi human paladins, you showed, I mean, if you showed young me what is currently in the collections tab over uh, on the Alpha, I would be really excited. Uh, and then I'm excited. Some bigger scale lore things. So this isn't necessarily a spoiler, but we do learn a little bit more background about the fall of Koresh. Koresh was the homeworld of the Ethereals. And what we learn is it had a world soul. That world soul began to sort of sing, to be radiant, much like Azeroth is right now. And very shortly after, that world fell to Dementius, mm -hmm. who Zalatath is the harbinger of. He did a big, chunky lore video on the whole story of Zalatath. Oh, I'm going to have to go watch his lore video. Um, after this. Uh, so Yes, we, I need to uh, watch that video. I've, I've never really heard cool. anything and about looking this. Looking into our first raid, we see a Void Ethereal. 
Uh, of course, Locust Walker is playing a role with Illyria as well. And while it's not quite Argus, the idea of maybe jumping to Koresh as a patch zone, that would be really cool. It would certainly, like, set up the stakes for Midnight. Uh, not by telling, but very much by showing a world that has been totally screwed. Now, when I was interviewing Holly, and uh, again, I should have that up by Friday. I think he already has it up. weaker points in the middle Maybe not. of the patch content, not always feeling like super connected. Like she was keenly aware that 1025 didn't have staying power as compared to other ones. I got the feeling that they are trying to learn and improve earnestly. Again, Dragonflight is a collection of game systems and mechanics, was terrific. It didn't feel like Warcraft, and that's what let me down. This stuff, though, I mean, both me and Matt within, like, 15, 20, 30 minutes of just seeing what was going on in the Isle of Dorne quest thought, okay, there is actually threat here. There are some Legion vibes in this questing. And obviously in Zalatath, we have a villain that is actually well-established, actually popular. When you look at the larger threat of Dementia... I've got so like, much lore yeah, that I've got to get really caught up on. Dude we've spent a lot of time with, but we learn about him through Zalatath, Illyria, Locust Walker, all established character stuff that can be done at a more reasonable pace. When the last Titan stuff happens. Yes. Well, we've built up those Titan characters. We've built up a Riddicron. You know, it, it does seem that we're just on an actual path here. So overall, I would say that I certainly like what I see. Don't pre-order based on that. I am cautiously optimistic. And for me, I trust that the raids will be good. I trust the dungeons will be good. My number one point of I always have fun in dungeons. Delves are able to be hard enough so that players who actually want a sort of single player like challenge, um, of course, delves you can, I believe, do with a party of uh, up to three people in total, uh, no real restriction. But I just want to be able to have faith that those can offer actual engaging gameplay instead of just being a big sleep fest. If they're able to achieve that, we're in a really good position. So. That is it for today's video. Of course, a big thanks to today's sponsor who helped pay for things like the microphone that uh, that I'm now getting that is better than the one we were using. That uh, is replacing one that I donated to the city of London because I was too busy talking to Holly after the interview to, uh, to to put my microphone in my bag. Anyway, we've got a video coming out <laughs> that tomorrow, which will be pretty damn hype going through all the lesser All right, give that a like. Thing. If you want something to watch immediately. Though, and for those of you who are going to be following along, um, I'll have this up as its own episode cut out here uh, after the fact. And I'll have a link down to this video below so you can go watch it at your leisure. Make sure to give him a like, follow along. Um, he's got a ton of great stuff. I thought his video with Holly was already out. Let me go check his YouTube channel real quick. Take the whole channel. Because I could have sworn it like popped up as a thumbnail somewhere. Yeah, maybe not. But I know he... I, I guess I, there, there is a video coming out with Holly. Maybe it's on the Warcraft channel. I did see somebody's th um, thumbnail out with, with Holly. So there is a video out there somewhere or coming down the pipeline. So we'll know more when we get closer to that. I can go ahead and go over here.